Will Jeremy Corbyn's swift return to the Labour Party do irreparable damage to its relations with the Jewish community and undermine Keir Starmer's leadership? We'll hear from a Jewish former MP who stood down over anti-Semitism and from one of Jeremy Corbyn's supporters. Also tonight. He took advantage of me. He abused his power. A Newsnight investigation into sexual exploitation by the peer Lord Ahmed of Rotherham has resulted in his resignation before he could be expelled from the House of Lords. We'll have reaction from his victim. Good evening. The decision to readmit Jeremy Corbyn to the Labour Party less than three weeks after he was suspended could blow wide open the divisions in Labour over anti-Semitism once again and also calls into question Labour's supposedly reformed disciplinary procedures. The Board of Deputies of British Jews has described his readmittance as a retrograde step for the party's relations with the Jewish community. Following the publication of the EHRC's report into anti-Semitism, Jeremy Corbyn had refused to retract his statement that the scale of the problem in the party had been dramatically overstated for political reasons. That was just 19 days ago. So how was this decision reached? I'm joined by our political editor, Nick Watt. So what happened this afternoon? Well, Kirsty, it's not an exaggeration to say that there is absolute turmoil tonight in the Parliamentary Labour Party. This is what one shadow minister told me. Number 10 could not have designed this better to make us look awful. It is a disaster. And let's just look at this tweet from Dame Margaret Hodge, the veteran Labour MP and former minister who told Jeremy Corbyn to his face that he was a racist and an anti-Semite. So she has tweeted, I simply cannot comprehend why it is acceptable for Corbyn to be a Labour MP if he thinks anti-Semitism is exaggerated and a political attack, refuses to apologise, never takes responsibility for his actions and rejects the findings of the EHRC report. Ridiculous, she said. Now, I understand that Dame Margaret has relayed her concerns directly to Sir Keir Starmer and, as I understand it, he faces a fight on his hands to persuade her to remain as a Labour MP. So how did it blow up? Well, this all dates back three weeks ago to the finding by that EHRC report that the Labour Party had unlawfully discriminated against Jewish Labour Party members. Now, on the day of the report, Jeremy Corbyn accepted the recommendations of that report and uh, he said that there had been a problem with anti-Semitism. But then he said this. The numbers have been exaggerated in my view. The public perception in an opinion poll last year was that one third of all Labour Party members were somehow or other under suspicion of anti-Semitism. The reality is it was 0.3 per cent of party members had a case against them which had to be put through the process. Well, that claim about an exaggeration led to his suspension from Labour, which was endorsed by Keir Starmer. I made it clear that we won't tolerate anti-Semitism or the denial of anti-Semitism uh, through the suggestion that it's exaggerated or factional. And that's why I was disappointed with Jeremy Corbyn's response. And that is why appropriate action has been taken, which I fully support. And now Jeremy Corbyn has been readmitted to the Labour Party after releasing a statement that he sent to the party on the day of his suspension in which he clarified his remarks. So let's look at the actual cru the crucial bit of that statement. And there you go. It says, to be clear, concerns about anti-Semitism are neither exaggerated nor overstated. The point I wish to make was that the vast majority of Labour Party members were and remain committed anti-racist, deeply opposed to anti-Semitism. Semitism. Now, Jeremy Corbyn regards that as a clarification, not a U-turn. A clarification that people's concerns about anti-Semitism were not exaggerated, but the scale of anti-Semitism was exaggerated. So this would appear to suggest that Jeremy Corbyn is saying, yes, I now fully support what is in the Equalities and Human Rights Commission report, but 
that still leaves Keir Starmer with a problem. It undermines his leadership. Yes, yeah, so tonight he is under intense pressure with a very unhappy parliamentary party. And tonight he tweeted a lengthy thread, not a word welcoming Jeremy Corbyn uh, back into the party. And this is how he began that. He said, I know that this has been another painful day for the Jewish community and those Labour members who fought so hard to tackle anti-Semitism. I know the hurt that has been caused and the trauma people have felt. Now, I spoke to one member of the Shadow Cabinet they do not detect in this decision to bring Jeremy Corbyn back, sort of die-hard supporters in the NEC plotting to bring Jeremy Corbyn back. It's more a case of Labour officials taking to heart one of the main criticisms in that report of political involvement in decision-making over cases and keeping Jeremy Corbyn at arm's length. But there is a very strong... Sorry, Keir Starmer. There's a very strong feeling in the Labour Party and indeed in the Shadow Cabinet that Keir Starmer and the leadership have one card left they could play, which is not to restore the Labour whip to Jeremy Corbyn. Nick, thank you very much indeed. Well, to discuss this further, I'm joined in the studio by Jenny Manson, the co-chair of Jewish Force for Labour, and from Liverpool, Riverside, the former MP for that area, Louise Elman. Uh, Jenny Manson, first of all, why couldn't Jeremy Corbyn simply apologise today for what he said on the day that the report was published? Well, first of all, I want to correct something that you were saying. He did not um, reject the findings for the HRC. I want to say some things about the HRC report myself. He did not reject the findings in that speech. You'll find he did not reject. He said it. that. They, uh, let's accepted be quite most, clear. What he said, and he said, he said it there, yeah. that it actually had been re yeah. accusations of anti-Semitism. The party had been dramatically HRC. exaggerated. Yeah. So I was talking about the fact he did not reject the findings of the HRC report, which I think was said a moment ago. He did no, not. He, no, we didn't yeah. say he rejected yeah. the findings. He said they'd been uh, dramatically exaggerated. Two points. Okay, the fact Why didn't he apologise? I'm asking you that straightforward um, question. Because many of us know that these claims have been exaggerated. I am Jewish too. There's a lot of talk about the Jewish community just now and how offended they are and how Keir is very worried about them. Nobody seems to remember that there are about 250,000 or 300 Jews in, thousand Jews in this country. A very large number of ours... So let, 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 no, let, no, me, no, quite, let me quite clear, in terms again. of your numbers... I am saying in, that... In terms of your numbers, yeah. make, make your, your point about the numbers. What I'm trying to say is, there is a, many, many Jewish communities, and they are not all upset about Jim being back in the Labour Party. An awful lot of us are very happy that he's back in the party. And a lot of us would say, like he said, that the allegations were over-exaggerated, over partly by the media. So the figure he, he mentioned, in a book called Bad News for Labour, they discovered that people out there think that 30% of Labour Party members have been investigated. The actual figures are something like 0.0. No. And can I also say that many of those allegations, according to the EHRC, were not correct. Can I just say that you talk about many uh, Jewish people are behind Jeremy Corbyn. There's 84% of the British Jew Jewish community believe there's a specific threat to British Jews according to the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism's yearly study. That is a yes. substantial amount. You know that the, uh, the yes. British Board I, of Jewish I Deputies which overwhelmingly no. yes. think this is yes. a retrograde okay. step and you don't represent them. No. Can I just say something? About 10, 10, 20 years ago, Jews stopped voting Labour, so there's a considerable feeling about 80% of people don't vote. Do Among the Jews who are Secular Jews often get, don't get invited to, to, for these um, surveys because they're not even registered. All I can tell you is that the Haredi community is, does not feel like that. Secular Jews don't feel like that. You cannot we lump say. all... You, you no, say it's secular Jews as if it's, a, a, you no. know, what the I'd whole say, homogeneity of that I'm not lumping any more than anyone else is. But, but can I'd I say, ask you yeah. about what you make of the actual report? Jeremy Corbyn said he will support the EHRC recommendations in full. Is he right to do that? The recommendations are okay, but can I just say something about the HRC? Is he right, but he's right to do that. He's perfectly right to do that. There are some points there that we're very worried about. We want, for example, as another Jewish, uh, a part of the Jewish community, we are very much hoping that Keir Starmer will talk to us about training. We have our own training beliefs. But let me just tell you one thing about the report. The report found... Um, it makes no statement about the scale of anti-Semitism whatsoever, but what it did find is that there were very unfair practice in the um, investigation, and many f respondents, people accused, are particularly well, unfairly dealt with. Well, let, uh, let, let, let's, move talking, talking, let's move on and talk about But nobody's talking about that. Let's, let's move yeah. on and talk about the future. Do you now think that all supporters of Jeremy Corbyn should throw their weight behind Keir Starmer and bring unity to the party? Um, <laughs> it's a difficult question. I would be very sad indeed if the whip is taken away from Jeremy. I do, of course. I'm a Labour Party member and I'm fiercely loyal to the party and I would very much like unity. 
I'm very pleased. And are you ready to throw your weight behind Keir Starmer? I don't know what throw weight means. I've never thrown my weight behind any leader. I, do I you agree with you. Do you support Keir Starmer in everything that he's doing for the party? And should um, other people in the same position yes, as you, with I, your I views, do I the same? I wasn't happy with his view on the bill on, on soldiers' amnesty. Nobody ever, ever supports a leader completely. Of course I support the, le the leadership of the Labour Party and the Labour Party. I'm a Labour Party member. Fiercely loyal. Very, very happy to, to have unity again. Pleased with the decision today. I would be very I pleased. What happens if Keir Starmer does remove the whip from Jeremy Corbyn? You said uh, you heard Nick Watt say that that's yes. a possibility. Well, I'll be, I'll be very sorry. What I want to talk about is justice. Jeremy is a very good man. He's an anti-racist. The EHRC report admits that when he, he appointed the General Secretary, Jenny Formby, procedure started to get better. Shami Chakrabarti's report is validated in the HRC. I would like the media and yourselves, and I'm very pleased to be on, to start to look a bit more widely at what's going on, what the report says, what, what Jews, apart from those who speak up against him, think. We are also important. We are Thank also spokesmen. Much, indeed, indeed. Let me now turn to Louise, Elman. Uh, Louise Melman. What do you make of Jeremy Corbyn's readmittance today? I think this is a, a backward step. Um, Keir Starmer has been very clear that he was going to eradicate Labour's shameful anti-Semitism. Um, after all, the EHRC report found Jeremy Corbyn's leadership responsible for anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and said that the growth of anti-Jewish racism in the Labour Party was at odds with the party's commitment to anti-racism. So it couldn't have been clearer than that. Keir Starmer has given strong commitments to Today, a decision was taken by the members of the Labour Party through the National Executive Committee to readmit Jeremy Corbyn without him making any apology for what he had done. I think if, it is a very backward step. If he had made an apology, would that, do you think, have drawn a line in the sand? If he had accepted his responsibility for the demise of the Labour Party, partly because of its anti-Jewish racism, and regretted what he had done, I think that would have made a very he, made a he did, he, he, did never, act, he did say that uh, he made it clear the concerns about anti-Semitism weren't exaggerated. He did say that today. The statement he issued today was more of a form of words, I suspect, designed to allow him to be readmitted to the Labour Party. Um, that phrase was very ambivalent. He could have been referring to anti-Semitism in society, not in the Labour Party. And he is responsible for what has happened. It is disgraceful it is and horrendous that under his leadership, British Jews were thinking of leaving the country should he become Prime Minister. Most people have now recognised that the Labour Party went into a very shameful situation. It must now get away from that. Keir Starmer has given the commitment to do it. The members of the Labour Party today did something that took us backwards. I hope that the members of the Labour Party now will listen to the Labour Party's new leadership and let's rid the Labour Party of this dreadful anti-Jewish racism. In a way, I mean, Keir Starmer took on board this idea that one of the criticisms had been of procedures before that there had been political interference from the leader's office. So, of course, he stood back and, as it were, let the procedure take place. There was nothing else, presumably, that Keir Starmer could have done to, before today. Well, this was a decision of Labour Party members through the National Executive Committee. And it's... Uh, it suggests to me that at least those members simply have not changed. Um, new members have now been elected to that committee, and I hope the new members will follow the new leader, Keir Starmer. But you think there's still really problems within the NEC? Sorry, there clearly are. Yeah. There clearly, there clearly are big problems. Right. Looking at today's decision, and what Keir Starmer and the Chief Whip should do now is to refuse to restore the whip to Jeremy Corbyn. In that way, they can show that they are determined, as they've said they are, to rid the party of this dreadful stain. So, you know, we heard and you have heard Nick Watt say that he has spoken to uh, three Labour MPs and hears that there is a very great likelihood that Margaret Hodge will resign as a Labour MP tomorrow. Um, can you give me your reaction to the possibility of that? Well, Margaret Hodge has been a valiant opponent of racism in the party and challenged Jeremy Corbyn directly. Uh, she has fought very, very hard against anti-Semitism in the party. It would be a tragedy if at this stage, under a new leader, she felt forced to resign. But the Labour Party have to show that they are going to change and they're going to allow Keir Starmer, the new leader, to deliver his promises. So 
as far as you're concerned, she should stay? It has to be a decision for Margaret, but it would be a very tragic situation so, if after all the fighting she's done, she felt she had to go. So, I hope the situation can be redeemed. So just uh, picking up what you were saying about the whip, you believe that, that what is open now to Keir Starmer is to withdraw the whip from Jeremy Corbyn. What then happens, in your view, if, that, if he was to do that, what would then happen? Presumably there would be you know, people like Jenny Manson and others of her ilk there would be, again, a big battle in the party. There will be an ongoing battle in the party until the party is rid of the stain of anti-Semitism. You can't be an anti-racist party at the same time as carrying out racism against Jewish people. After all, the, the Equality and Human Rights Commission found that Jewish members of the Labour Party had been harassed and had faced indirect discrimination. That is shameful. Thank you both very much indeed. I'm afraid we have no time.